have you ever taken landscape photos with your phone at night? Why not? Well, that's what we're doing tonight. All the way through the Milky Way season, there's different times of the month where we just can't take photos of the stars, well, good photos of the stars. That's mainly because the moon's up there and tonight's no different. It's about half size moon at the moment, so there's lots of light pollution here. We're not gonna get lots of good stars, but we are gonna get, well, it's gonna be a good test. I'm gonna bring out three different phones. Try the iPhone 13 Pro Max, we'll try the, well, the Pixel 6, and we'll try the S22 Ultra. It's sitting over there on the tripod at the moment. And what I've got going on here is this rocky formation up here um, and this galactic core starting to come up behind it there. But with the moon as bright as it is, we're not going to get too much of that core. But we should be able to get some good stars, maybe a little bit of cloud action with that rocky formation. It should be a bloody good photo. Now with S22, we're going to use pro mode. So we're going to do this all manually. We're going to set it up for uh, 30 seconds, pro mode. 30 seconds, ISO, we're gonna leave it at 800. Might even get a little bit darker than that, or a little bit less than that, depending on how much moonlight gets thrown out here. So manual focus on the stars, that's usually about 0.8 on this phone I have found. And uh, 30 seconds, ISO 800, manual focus. That's it, good to go, I'm gonna take that photo. It's taking a photo right now. While it's taking that photo, you may wonder why is he taking three different photos uh, with these three phones, well, they all work very, very differently. The the uh, Samsung taking the photo right now, it's going to do a lot more manual. You have to do it a lot more manually. Um, with the Pixel, I'm just going to use astrophotography mode, just sitting on the tripod, hit the button. It's going to go for four minutes and six seconds or whatever it is, something like that. And it's going to stack all those photos, get nice, crisp stars. And the iPhone is going to do, well, it's a cool thing with the foreground elements. I, I haven't seen a, a phone do anything better than the iPhone does right now with the foreground subjects at night time. It just works really, really well. So we'll see how, how these three phones go with that rocky formation. The Samsung is done now, and that actually looks pretty bloody good. Good stars. You can see the tail of the galactic core coming up and the rocky formation looks pretty good as well. We're gonna take all these three photos back, put them on the computer and blow them up and see how good that foreground element really is. Next up, we've got the Pixel. This uh, phone holder that I'm using here is a Ulanzi one. It's probably the best one I've used so far. I'll put the uh, link to it down the bottom there. I like it because it's already got the base on it. You don't need to put a different uh, Arca Swiss plate onto the phone holder, it goes straight into the tripod. And that's pretty bloody handy. It's it's uh, got the spring loaded there. You can lock, lock the phone in once it's in there. It's all around. It's pretty bloody good. All right. So for the Pixel, we're just going to go into night mode, astro mode, and let it shoot for four minutes and six seconds. Actually, while we're waiting for this, there's a photography group I should tell you about over there on Facebook. Uh, I'll link it down the bottom here. Basically, it's a group of mobile photography guys who enjoy long exposure photography, nighttime photography, and photography in general from your mobile phone. It doesn't matter if you're an Apple fanboy, Google fanboy, Android fanboy, it doesn't matter. We get some bloody good photographers over there sharing their secrets and tips and tricks and encouraging each other to get some really good photos over there. So head over there, answer the questions, we'll let you in, and you'll be surprised the sort of photos that the, these bloody legends are getting out of their phones. Looks like that pixel's finished. Let's have a look. Well, that looks pretty good too. To be honest, I can't tell the difference on the back of the phone with these two phones so far. The Pixel and the uh, and the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra look to me like they're pretty bloody similar. Now let's let's try the iPhone. So the iPhone here, I get the best results with the iPhone. Keep in mind, you've seen me put this on a tripod all the time, so I'm shooting for like 30 seconds minimum on all these phones. So with the iPhone. Um, we're going to shoot pro raw. We're going to shoot for 30 seconds in night mode. It's going to you're going to put it on a tripod. Once it's on the tripod, go into night mode. Wait for a second. It'll give you the opportunity then to change it to 30 seconds. Touch the stars for focus and shoot the shutter. And that's that's it. Dead set simple. Well, <laughs> that looks pretty bloody good too. All three of these look sensational. So keep in mind the conditions that we've got. We've got about half a moon full here. The galactic core starting to rise. The, the core itself is still behind these rock formation here. But uh, so far, all these things look pretty bloody good. What I'm gonna do, I'll take these back, I'll put them into Lightroom on the computer so you can all see exactly what I'm, how I'm gonna edit these things. And we'll see how, what sort of, we'll see what the best is I can get out of all three of these photos. Let's go back to the office. So how good were they? Three phones taking three good landscape photos under the stars when I've got them loaded here now into Lightroom on the computer, on the Mac. Now, 
people who have watched my channel for some time, you know that I absolutely detest the whole uh, ecosystems not working very well together. In fact, I really like the Pixel phone, but I don't use it very often because it's really hard to get that data off the phone onto the Mac, but I have found a way to do it, and it has worked 100% of the time for me ever since I've bought the damn thing. It's a Wondershare Doctor Phone, and basically it's a, a interactive suite between the um, Android devices and the Mac, and it just works, and it works really, really well. So I've brought them in, and I've put them straight into Lightroom, and let's have a look at these three photos from the Pixel, the iPhone, and the S22 Ultra. Here are the three photos in Lightroom. Here's the first one here is the S22 Ultra. The second photo here is the Pixel 6, and the third photo is the iPhone. Anyone who uses any of these photos, or any of these phones, you can pretty well identify which one's which. And I've got to say, now that I'm seeing it on the big screen, um, the iPhone, it's got all the artifacts that is generally going to be associated with the iPhone. This is not, as I said before, this is better than that. This is, if you've got one of these phones, this is what you can expect. So it does a good job for what you've got in your pocket. Have a look at the S22 Ultra. Now if I zoom into the stars, you can see a little bit of star trails. That's more of a setup from my point of view. Probably should have gone 25 seconds. Ideally, I'd shoot about 26, maybe 27 seconds on this one. And if I zoom into the rocks there, the rocks look pretty good. The trees are all blurred out. I don't think that the computational photography on this, and this is something that I've noticed with Samsung's in general, didn't do that good with what's in the foreground. The iPhone generally does, but these rocks are about... 100 meters or so away from me, they're all lit up only from the moon, which is why it's possible to get these photos. The Pixel, on the other hand, this is the duck's nuts as far as this sort of photography goes. When there's a little bit of light pollution, I don't think the Pixel is actually beatable. This thing is just bloody awesome. Look at the detail in the rocks, in the trees. You can see the branches in the trees. You can see the grass on the knoll. Look at this one here from the iPhone. If I scroll down, look at the trees here. The grass, you can tell it's grass. Well, I can tell it's grass because I just know where I was. And the Samsung is very similar to the iPhone in the foreground. It's 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 good, but it's not great. But that Pixel, bloody hell, that thing's awesome. That's just incredible. What we'll do now quickly is we'll have a quick edit on these photos. So we'll start with the Samsung. And because we're using Lightroom, the best thing in Lightroom for this sort of photo, it's going to be that sky masking. So if I go up to masking, uh, select sky, let it do its magic, and it will do it pretty quickly here, I would imagine, and it's going to mask out the entire night sky. And because we've got a really clear line between the two, it did it pretty well. Um, so what I want to do first is I think it looks a little bit blue, that sky, a little bit too cool. That'll do right there, just adjust the white balance. I'm going to increase the contrast a little, reduce the blacks, and increase the dehazing. And that already, to me, to my eye, looks pretty bloody good. And to be honest, that's, that's kind of all I want to do. Um, I'll close that masking off. I'm going to go down to <clears throat> the noise reduction <clears throat> and increase the noise reduction just slightly. And that'll do us. I think that's all we're going to do to this photo here. We'll go over to the iPhone now. The iPhone, it just looks like it's... Well, filmed on Mars or something. It's really, really warm in temperature. So first off, I'm going to bring that temperature down. It's going to affect the, the sky a lot. But what I'm trying to do is bring those rocks in the foreground back to a neutral color, which is roughly there. Now, let's go up to that masking tool, select sky, wait for it to do its magic. Here we go. All marked out. And I'm going to get that white balance again and increase the warmth of the night sky that looks pretty good about there it's kind of a neutral sort of color <clears throat> might even add a little bit of magenta to that just a little bit now if we go down to the dehazing slider we'll increase it and we'll decrease the blacks and increase the contrast that's pretty much all i want to do to this photo hit that up with there <clears throat> I'm now going to go down to the noise because if we zoom right into this, these rocks, you can see all these digital artifacts that um, Apple is just, well, it's just known for that now in these astro photos that I take at least. Increase that noise reduction a little bit. Have a look at that compared to the Samsung. The Samsung looks a damn sight better. There's not a lot we can do with this. I think the iPhone certainly struggles 
with this sort of light. You may have seen a video I did walking around the Gold Coast and it struggled with a little bit when there was ambient light. When it's pitch black, it actually does a really, really good job, especially with light painting. Let's have a look at this last one, the Pixel. Straight off the bat, I think this is just bloody amazing. Uh, the ratio here makes it look good. I probably should have done the same thing with other two photos. Doesn't matter. Um, go up the top here. Well, if I zoom right into this photo initially, you can see here, there's just no noise. You can see the cracks in the rocks, the grass on the base of the ground there, the trees, the branches. The detail in this is just bloody amazing. It's really, really impressive. When the sky is, or when you've got a little bit of light pollution and you try and take photos of the stars, I believe, in my humble opinion, the pixel is the dark nuts. It's going to beat any phone that's out there. So what I'll do, the sky looks a little bit too blue to me. The ground looks just mint. I'm gonna hit that masking tool, select sky. How good is this tool? It's just, as far as our astro photography, astro landscape sort of photography goes, it's just bloody amazing that you can do this. It's gonna increase the warmth of the sky just a little bit, just a little bit. Decrease the blacks just to that point there. Increase the contrast and we're done. That's all I wanna do with these three photos. Let's have a look at them. So there's the three photos there, all edited in Lightroom. They're all pretty good for what you carry in your pocket. The Pixel is by far the best though when it comes to this uh, really light polluted situation that we had last night with the moon. Anyway, love to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment down the bottom. I'll see you guys next week. Catch you later.